list has become a market. It is a very different market from any other market because there's a negative value on the good you have. So that means you have to pay to get rid of it. And if you, for instance, run a waste incinerator, you get about 50% of your earnings from the sale of energy and about 50% from the, the fee you get from the one who gives you the, the waste, which means that it's, it makes sense to even import waste from a long way from other countries. This is where we receive all our waste. Uh, this uh, energy plant has the capacity to treat more than 400,000 tons of waste each year. The waste is delivered in large trucks and uh, dumped into a big waste bunker right behind me. At this uh, point, uh, some of the waste is dumped directly on the floor because we want to do analysis and uh, to check what's inside the waste. Every product we buy, apart from what we eat, end up as waste at some time or another. And uh, uh, now being a father of two girls, I do realize that there are lots of children's toys and so on that ends up in the house, which probably end up as waste way too early, because uh, the, uh, the quality of many of consumer goods today are not very good. All uh, the citizens of Oslo are supposed to sort, sort their waste. That means that they have to put food waste in green bags, plastic uh, materials in blue bags, uh, and residual waste goes into normal plastic bags. This waste is carried to our optical sorting plant, where we are now. This is where we uh, sort the green and blue bags from the residual waste, using camera technology. This is the optical sorting system. Uh, the green bags are carried to a biogas plant, and uh, the plastic in the blue bags are carried to uh, Germany for uh, material recovery. And located uh, right behind me is the uh, waste bunker of this energy plant. Uh, currently, we have uh, approximately uh, 5,500 uh, cubic meters of waste in this bunker, uh, ready for incineration and energy production. The incinerators are located uh, just right uh, behind me here. Uh, and the crane uh, is lifting the waste into the incinerator. The crane can lift more than five tons into the incinerator in one lap. The waste is uh, incinerated in uh, incinerators like this and we can produce uh, district heating for uh, 84,000 households and we also can produce electricity enough to provide the schools of Oslo with uh, uh, power. The incinerator has 850 degrees Celsius and uh, it's water uh, located around uh, the incinerator uh, and the water gets heated up by the incineration process. An incineration is uh, a continuously process. It runs for 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Oslo is expected to grow quite a lot. Today there is uh, just about 500,000 inhabitants it is, and uh, it is expected that by 2050 there will be close to 2 million inhabitants in the greater Oslo area. Close to 50% of all the energy in district heating comes from waste. 
and we hope to have removed all fossil fuels in district heating by 2016. The city of Oslo has a wish to remove all fossil heating by 2020. Electric cars are quite popular in Norway and at least in the Oslo area. It's a smart alternative to using uh, taxis and fossil fuel driven cars in, in the city area. They're also uh, made available to the public by the government by removing taxis, giving them permission to drive in bus lanes, uh, free parking on public places. So it's a, it's a smart alternative. And this is a uh, Buddy, one of the, uh, the smallest electric cars. Well, uh, at this stage, uh, we need to do some analyzing from uh, our process. We have a lot of uh, water and other chemicals in our uh, energy production. Uh, so we need to do sampling and uh, analyzing of these uh, products. Incineration of uh, waste uh, produces a lot of uh, greenhouse gases and we have to reduce uh, our emissions to a minimum level. So the smoke from the incineration process goes through a very complicated purification process uh, located right here. The smoke uh, that comes out from our chimneys is consisting of uh, more than 99% pure water steam. This is what, uh, le what's leaving the plants as bottom ash. 20% uh, of the wastes that we receive uh, goes out again as bottom ash. In this ash, there's a lot of materials. As you can see here, we have different uh, iron and uh, other materials. And we can use this, uh, again, we, can, we are sending them to uh, material recycling, so we can use these materials again. The ash, like it can be utilized in uh, maintenance work and asphalt production and uh, other types of maintenance. Nachdem äh, in Norwegen das Abfallaufkommen um ungefähr 30 Prozent äh, steigen wird im Laufe der nächsten zehn Jahre, muss man diese, äh, diese Anlagen groß genug auslegen. Im Augenblick haben diese Anlagen eine Überkapazität und dieses Loch muss man jetzt stopfen. Und da ist es dann äh, attraktiv, Abfall zu importieren aus Ländern, die nicht so viele Müll Müllverbrennungsanlagen haben, zum Beispiel aus England. All the time we have delegations from all over the world, students, government officials and uh, companies who wants to see our plants and learn more about the, the Oslo waste management system. And of course we are proud to, to show them what we're doing here and uh, we're trying to do this from an environmental view and uh, material recycle as much as possible.
Wir sind hier im Amt für Klima- und Umweltschutz und ähm, haben eine sehr gute Arbeitsatmosphäre hier und müssen natürlich auch mit gutem Beispiel vorangehen. Und deswegen haben wir Mülltrennung hier. Äh, wir haben keine Abfalleimer mehr in den einzelnen Büros, sondern die Mitarbeiter müssen herauskommen und ihren Abfall selbst hier wegschmeißen. Und dadurch haben wir die Abfallmenge eigentlich ziemlich stark reduziert die letzten Jahre. Da denke ich, dass wir Behörden einfach auch gefragt sind, weil wir sollen, sollen ganzheitlich diese, diese Probleme oder diese Herausforderungen ansehen. Und äh, während es für eine Müllverbrennungsanlage sehr lohnt sein kann, möglichst viel Abfall zu verbrennen und daraus eben Geld zu verdienen, ist es für eine Gesellschaft eben nicht lohnend, äh, unbedingt immer mehr Abfall zu produzieren und, äh, und zu verbrennen. Sondern da ist es, äh, lohnt es sich, um spätere Umweltauswirkungen zu vermeiden, möglichst wenig Abfall zu produzieren und den Abfall, den wir produzieren, bestmöglich zu verwerten. Und da ist in erster Linie äh, die Rohstoffe herauszuziehen und erst in zweiter Linie die Energie zu gewinnen. Musik